You're listening to Veg Your Best. There has never been a more important time to be vegan. At Veg Your Best, I want to help you. I want to help you limit and eliminate the consumption of animal products without feeling deprived, overwhelmed, or unsupported, even if no one you know is vegan. My name's Michelle Olander. I'm a life coach. And I know that if I could go vegan in my 50s, With all my excuses, I know you can start moving in that direction too. Veg your best, and there's nothing you can't do. Episode 127, Your Vegan Identity. Hello, veg heads, veg your besties, all you listeners, welcome and welcome back. You know, I wanted to just share a small concept this week, and I think it will be a short episode, but you know, every time I say that, you've heard me before, I think it's going to be short, so you never know. You never know how it's going to go. But it seemed like a very uh, specific issue. I wanted to talk to you about one of my clients. Uh, One of my clients has been working with me for a few months, and her main goal, well, her main goals, I actually can't tell you too much about it yet, secret, secret stuff, Uh, she's working on a business. That's the main goal that she's focused on, building really an amazing uh, vegan business. And when she's ready to tell this audience all about it, it's going to be so fun. And, uh, you know, she's just another one of those dream clients. I get to work with people who have every sort of interest and goal. I really honestly have the best, best job in the world. And my clients all in their own ways inspire me. But this particular client is the subject of today's episode. This particular client has a very ambitious goal. And part of that process of building this ambitious business is that she wants to take uh, really great care of herself. She wants to be able to have the stamina and the strength and the focus and the energy. And she also wants to find some extra time in her day for the things she's taking on without giving up too much of the time she has with her kids and with her friends and with her activities. So a while back, uh, maybe around Thanksgiving, a while back, she said she wanted to drink less alcohol. She said she was drinking most days and had for many years, and the alcohol was almost always involved with socializing and trips and fun impromptu get-togethers. And, you know, over the years, she'd become very knowledgeable about wine production in Europe and in Napa, and she had, uh, actually, she had some very good understanding of artisanal tequila production because she has a home in Mexico, and she understood a lot about the role of of tequila as a tradition and as an industry. And anyway, she thought that if she drank infrequently, infrequently, she would have a little extra energy and focus in the evening after dinner to do a couple of things and and that she might be able to hit the ground in the morning with more clarity and focus. And I said, sure, okay. So what makes that, uh, what's, why is that a problem? You only want to drink on special occasions now, not on a daily or weekly basis. So why not just uh, why not just stop until there's a special occasion on the calendar, a special destination or event, and you just plan for those infrequent occasions since you say that's what you want to. And she was quiet. She was quiet for a while. And she goes, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I have an identity as somebody who drinks. So fascinating, right? She said, I'm going to look at my notes here. She goes, I kind of romanticize alcohol. I kind of know a lot about how it's produced, how it should be served, how it should be paired. I know about the history, the production of alcohol. Uh, It's part of being a good host when I'm entertaining. It's part of me being a good guest when I'm invited. So those are my notes about what she said that day. Really interesting, right? My client noticed that she has an identity 
built around, she had built around, uh, partially around drinking alcohol, and she was having a hard time imagining herself with the identity of a woman who seldom drinks, someone who almost never drinks. Now, now before you start looking, looking at your, your uh, apps and going, wait, wait, why are we talking about this on Veg Your Best? <laughs> We're talking about it because my client is vegan and she is building a vegan company. Can't tell you anymore, but she wasn't always vegan, right? And she wasn't always a vegan entrepreneur. Those are new identities that she took on. So I asked her how she did it. I asked, so how did you change your pre-vegan identity? How did you change your flexitarian or your animal eating identity to your current vegan identity? Because you know, when we change things like what we consume, when we change things like how we live or our professions or our our family relationships as, a, as maybe like a spouse or being a parent, it involves creating, crafting a new identity. It involves writing a new story about who you are and how you show up in this world. So I wanted to, sh- wanted to share this so that if you are someone, if you're listening and you're someone developing a new vegan practice or getting a little stricter as you are moving towards a vegan goal, or maybe you're increasingly eating a plant-based diet, and not just there, anywhere. If you're moving into any new phase of life as a parent, as someone with a new job, or as someone with no job for the first time in a long time, these are all, these are all situations where we have to create, we have to craft a new identity. So whether you're creating a life as a new athlete or as someone who has a challenging, maybe medical diagnosis to handle, whether you're a young person taking on the new role as a self-supporting adult, or maybe you're a very busy adult taking on the new role of caretaker for an elderly family member or an ill family member, in all these situations throughout life, we have so many opportunities to rewrite the story of who we are and to rebrand our identities. And I think we can see how many people find this traumatic, find it difficult, but it can also be marvelous, a marvelous opportunity. But how? question is how to change your story, how to change that identity you have. And it always begins with awareness. We want to look for the way we say who we are, not just how we introduce ourselves to others, but how we say who we are to ourselves. You know, I'm a foodie. Hmm. I'm kind of a social person. I'm a people person. I'm a people pleaser. Uh, I'm an expert. I'm an expert on wine. I'm a intellectual. I'm a working class. I work with my hands. I'm a student. I'm an athlete. I'm visual. I'm a family person. I'm very traditional. I'm a new early adopter. I'm all about travel. How many different ways do we know people identify themselves? But however we identify, however we feel comfortable inhabiting the world, I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you to grow your awareness about those stories that underpin your identity, because those are your stories, okay? They're stories that we have practiced, all of us. They're identities that we've honed, and in this world... In this world, most of us have anchored those identities. We've reinforced those identities with things like, well, like the things that we eat and that we drink and how we consume. We have reinforced these identities, uh, maybe your identity as an omnivore with all kinds of food, not just food to keep us alive, but food 
full of dopamine hits, full of fun. My client had reinforced her identities as a guest, as a host, as a sophisticated traveler with wine and tequila and in-depth knowledge about those things. And as she increased her awareness of that, she was able to see she was able to see what was standing in the way of an identity change. And then she was able to see that actually this was an identity she herself had forged. So of course, she could forge a new one whenever she wanted. Because the obstacle indicates the way, right? What stands in the way is the way. What stands in the way of an identity you might like to shift or fine tune or even completely change? You know, I know I had as a, as a pre-vegan reinforced my identity as a good guest from childhood on. By eating what I was given, I was never a picky eater. I prided myself on it. I ate almost anything. And I had incorporated, like almost literally incorporated the idea that if someone gives you food, it's the height of rudeness to refuse. And I reinforced my identity later as what I thought was a a sophisticated traveler, as an educated person by visiting artisanal production areas, Uh, learning about cheeses, buying leather, understanding the way wools are produced, how historic uh, fishing villages function, and the way history and economics come together in gastronomy. Many of these things I visited, uh, even still, are UNESCO-protected zones, intrinsic to the art and patrimony of many, many countries. And I prided myself on being enthusiastic and knowledgeable about things that were not going to be uh, compatible, right? These are not compatible with a vegan practice. So that awareness meant that I bit by bit learned one thing at a time, how to go to France and not eat potatoes roasted in duck fat. And I learned how to go to Italy and not eat cheese or tuna. You know, my identity is still someone who wants to understand and learn and appreciate and travel with with awareness of language and history. And, And I don't eat or buy those products. My client that we started the episode with, my client had to practice awareness of what she really values about her identity as a host and a guest and an entrepreneur and to practice not drinking so that she could enjoy her friends, family, and work and still have that extra clarity and energy she wants to devote to the business she's building. Too many of us are inflexible with change, and we make new situations, even the ones we haven't asked for, we make them even more traumatic and painful and disruptive than they need to be because we spend so much time feeling we've lost our identity, forgetting that our identity is always ours to create. We forget that we are in charge. Always, always since we were babies, we've been developing an identity to help us get by in the best way we can. Good times and bad. And yes, sometimes the people around us do get used to one of the identities and they may prefer one of those identities. For example, if you were the first of your friends maybe to get married or have kids, you might have had that experience where your peer group finds you a lot less fun than you used to be. <laughs> and if you're training for a 10K or a marathon, people might have an opinion about that. And if you no longer drink or eat animal products, people sometimes may feel defensive. They might feel that you think they should change because you've trained them. You've trained them as well as yourself that you have an identity, and now you're shifting it. But the you underneath is the same. Whether you love fun or learning or challenge or peaceful alone time or family, tradition, community, 
whatever it is, it can all stay the same. It's just the details of how you do it that are in the identity that you have complete power over. My client who wanted to cut back on drinking to remove it as a normal activity in her life, she just did it through awareness of the how she had already moved away from animal products and developed a vegan practice. It was simple. She had her why. Drinking often didn't help her find the time and energy for her new business. So she practiced awareness of how to create the new identity. She knew she already didn't drink during the day, so that was easy. She practiced doing the things that seemed only a little bit hard, but not at all impossible. For the harder things, she made a plan. She noticed what worked well and what did not work so well. And through small tweaks and through easy conversations first and seeing what works, she was able to slowly take on the more daunting conversations and the more uncomfortable choices just through awareness. And she crafted her newest identity. What about you? Where do you think that the identity you want is at odds with who you are right now? What ceremonies of life, what trappings of your life feel as if they would just be too difficult to change? You know, you know what I'm going to say, because I think coaching is the most effective way to go about change. I think it's the most effective way. And if there's something about change that feels daunting and that you would like to bring to a free coaching call, that is exactly, it's exactly how it starts for all my clients. A free call with me, we discuss what you want. Who will I be with a new identity? Who will I be without this exact identity? You know, I know it holds a lot of people back. Maybe, maybe you. People forget. Maybe you forgot that you were the one that created the identity that you have, and you can change it. And of course you can do it yourself, but a coach can help you stay focused on it and help you not to overcomplicate it and then make it so difficult that you give up. So I invite you today to think about that identity you have now and the one that intrigues you, the one that's beckoning you, but you can't quite see how it's possible right now. And if you have an identity that's reinforced by the consumption of animal products, I can show you how to shift that and build on all the things that you do love about yourself, build on all the things that people really love about you. And we can begin to limit and eliminate the consumption of meat, dairy, fish, and eggs because This is just the truth. You're not fixed. This is not just how you are. You are able to grow and change and learn and lean into new things. Something that you want more, something you value more. Remember, we all change when there's no choice. I want you to enjoy the change you want now on purpose while you have that opportunity. It's not too late. It's not too hard. You're not alone. I think that midlife is the perfect, perfect time to remember this. Superman, Superman was not Clark Kent's secret identity. Superman was Superman, but he hid behind the secret identity of Clark Kent. All right, kids. All right? Bet your best. Veg Your Best podcast production, music, and editing by Charlie Weinshank. Thanks, Charlie. Before you go, it would mean so much to me and the Veg Your Best team if you would hit subscribe, leave us a five-star review, or share with someone you think might be interested. Something about algorithms, it helps bump us up a little in the rankings, and that's the best way to help others find the podcast and for us to find our audience. So, until next week, make it easy and veg your best. <laughs>